Uh, hello, everyone. Um, thank you for coming, first of all. Um, well, uh, well, you're in the talk, Airport Editor and Pipeline. Okay, see if anyone is wrong. Well, uh, okay, a little introduction. Uh, I'm Gorka Mendieta. I'm a developer uh, from Spain. Um, uh, during the last year, I have been working in Blender mainly in Python. Uh, well, also C++ in OpenGL and other things, but uh, it doesn't matter for this talk. So, uh, Blender developer. I work for Indra Sistemas, uh, which is uh, also a Spanish company. Um, it's a huge company and, well, they make a lot of things, but one of the things we do is flight simulators, uh, is I work in, I work in on. And my department develops uh, its own graphics engine. It's called Invi, so we can take all the decisions uh, about the pipeline, about the uh, formats and, and so on. And maybe a year and a half, we, uh, took the decision to modify our pipeline to make something more modern and less time consuming. And I'm not gonna say cheaper, okay, but my company already think about it. So yeah, I, I'm sorry about that. Um, so uh, what we do, okay, this is just for curiosity, but uh, uh, some examples of the simulators we, we do. Uh, uh, my department works not on the hardware that the company also does, but we are working on the graphics that are projected into everything that you are seeing here. Uh, maybe the most complex ones are, are the one uh, of the second row left, you know, the, the cockpit, that is, is, it's a real uh, airplane cockpit. Uh, and that's it, so the pilot is training in this kind of simulators, you know. Uh, from the point of view of this talk, a flight simulator, uh, even being a, so a complex thing, uh, can be thought as a game engine, as, as a game, I mean, okay, so we need 3D assets and everything that, that the game needs. So, what this talk is about, um, it's divided into two different topics, uh, how we have integrated Blender in our pipeline, uh, from an asset pers perspective, I mean uh, just simple models, okay? So the user, our artists uh, model things and they should be exported and be prepared to our engine. And the second part of the pipeline, maybe for me it's exciting and maybe it's the most interesting part, is a custom 2D, 3D airport design tool we are developing inside Blender at this moment. It's not finished yet, but uh, I think it's really interesting. So let's start uh, about the pipeline, okay? So the first thing is the publisher because we already have the publisher and, and we need to take Blender and put into this pipeline. It's a really simple thing. So the uh, gray square here, the publisher square, uh, is a C++ module that uh, publishes things to, to our engine. As you can see, there are uh, different readers, GLTF reader, FBX, FLT reader, that converts uh, all this information into a common representation that is really important for this talk, okay? This scene yellow square is quite important. And this uh, is a kind of a, a scene graph, okay? But it's not smart, it's only data, okay? That is consumed by different modules in, in our system. So this piece of scene uh, representation, the scene graph goes to the publisher, the publisher makes a lot of things, flattening things, merging things, or whatever. And the exportation, the final exportation is a GLTF binary that the, the engine is fed with, okay? So to put Blender into this existing pipeline, is, it, it has been really simple. We are using the GLTF IO exporter here. And because, well, it exports uh, every metadata, every dynamic property, every register property, which is what we need. And um, when we are going, going to talk uh, more about that in, in a moment. And then we uh, also have to develop a specific Blender reader, this C++ GLTF, uh, specific from Blender, and everything is working. So uh, when we decided to, to change our pipeline, we, uh, we, we have some needs uh, from Blender. So the first thing we, we do 
uh, with it is to develop an add-on that uh, lets the user give all the information that our engine needs. Okay, so we need, for example, to add special notes to the hierarchy because Blender is an arti artistic thing, so it doesn't know too much about game engine, so we need to specify level of details or switches that are a kind of node that we are using, different kind of lights that Blender doesn't have of or locators. Locators is just a, like an empty to specify some positions in the model. Uh, we need to add and set properties to the nodes in the hierarchy. We need to add support to our material definition. We need a, another kind of textures, maybe infrared texture or thermal uh, texture for the flight simulator. So we need to, to give Blender this information. Um, and we need to import. Uh, I wrote open flight FLT format is a it's an old format. I don't know if anyone knows about this this format FLT. <laughs> uh, but there are another uh, format that we need to import into Blender. Okay, um, and we want to do everything in Python if possible. Okay, uh, it was my decision. I I didn't want to fork Blender and to compile it uh, every single time or or thinking about uh, future developers. Um, maybe I am used to work uh, with the core of Blender and to program something, but for new developers, uh, just they just to, uh, need to um, maybe fix some issue and to learn everything about C++ in Blender is quite complex and it takes time. So I thought Python it, it was uh, the good decision. So, um, how we solve every single problem here. Um, really simple, in fact. Uh, to specify different kind of nodes, we just use dynamic properties. Uh, I don't know, you, you can see the, the, the picture good from, okay. So we are using dynamic properties and, and a naming convention. This naming convention uh, is for the different objects in the scene. So you can see maybe uh, on the top right of the, of the screenshot, that uh, some empty nodes are called invis, dot lights, dot whatever. So it's our naming convention and that's it. And the dynamic properties, I think everyone knows about it. It's just a custom property that the user can, can put into an object, but we do it by scripting. So, so we add a menu in the app menu that uh, lets the user add different kind of nodes and this operator, the add object, uh, add the, and maybe an empty with a proper naming convention and set the dynamic properties with the full values and that's it. And the user modify the values in that panel that, that is on right there and that's it. Uh, the panels in Blender are really, I would say smart. Okay, you can do beautiful things in the panel. So you are able to, to put operators in the panel that maybe when the user click on that button, something happen in the viewport and you can try to mimic the, what is gonna happen when you import that thing in the, in the engine, okay? So you can give uh, feedback to the user easily. Uh, for the, our material definition, uh, also just a quite simple tool in that panel, okay? Uh, so the user decide which textures this, this material is, is going to have. And depending on the textures, uh, this node uh, graph is created. It's, uh, it's the, the graph that the GLTF exporter wants, okay? But the Blender uh, viewport shows is really, really good. And in fact, uh, we are using PBR in our engine, so the way the users see uh, the models in the viewport is quite similar to the to the to our engine. Okay, and we are using also dynamic properties in the in the materials to store all these uh, textures. Maybe infrared is the most is the most common because you know uh, in our engine you can see things with infrared uh, visuals. So that's it. Um, lighting systems. Um, in an airport, okay, we are doing flight simulator. So in the airports, uh, there is a kind of light that have a different uh, field of view in the vertical plane and horizontal plane. 
So we need to give this information also to Blender. And what we need is just try to mimic the previous software visualization that our user are used to work with. So we write a custom shader that just do these things, okay? Just uh, so a uh, first zoom in the viewport and and you can see the cooling when you look the the light from the well, right not because it's disabled but I'm enable it in a moment that's it and there is a you know this light cooling is just giving feedback for the user uh, really simple say there just a couple of lines and super good uh, Import, export, open flight 3D formats, but we are already importing other formats, importing and exporting. Um, okay, this, uh, we already have, have a C, C++ library which loads a lot of uh, di different formats, different 3D formats. And all these readers that we already have in C++ convert these formats into our common scene graph representation. So, what I did is to create bindings for Python to this uh, scene graph representation and compile it to, to be a dynamic Python library. And in doing this thing, I can load and import and export everything that our engine works with, okay? So every format is, let's say, for free because the only thing I had to do is to, to do a scene graph to Blender scene conversion uh, Blender to this async graph conversion and it works for us and that's really good. <laughs> so I uh, save quite a lot of time with, with the, this little thing. We are using PyBind and C++ modules for other things that we are uh, going to talk in a moment. And the exportation and the from Blender we export to GLTF. We use the Blender GLTF uh, input of two add-on. Th thanks to Julian for your work. And I don't know how to pronounce your second name, so. <laughs> um, so this add-on um, export everything and in the, the, it has a hook system. It's like a callback system, more or less. Uh, you can register to, to any of these hooks and modify the, the data that is gonna be exported. So it's not only what you have in the scene, you can modify it in the middle of the exportation. And in fact, we are doing a lot of things here. For example, remove the external references because GLTF uh, doesn't have external references. So we remove it totally from our output model and we use some uh, GLTF custom extensions to represent this data. So our engine know how to, how to do these things and that is. And other things we do, for example, is copy textures to the output folder because we are using textures that Blender doesn't know about. We, it just paths in, in uh, dynamic properties, so, so we need to copy them manually to the output folder, for example. Uh, but you can do other things in the GLTF exporter and it works good. Um, so from this point, we have the GLTF exported. We put the GLTF into a publishing system that we already have in C++ and everything works. And you can load uh, our Blender models into our graphics engine and that's it. Okay, so this is uh, the first uh, step in, in this talk, the first part. It's uh, this simple pipeline is uh, other things, I mean, uh, modeling in Blender and doing everything in Blender is exactly the same, so the user can do everything. Just use these uh, little tools at the end, maybe the modeling, and just put all the parameters and export it, and it works. Um, so, when I finished this first add-on, my manager told me that we need to, to design a new 2D airport uh, tool. Uh, we already have one, but it was quite old and the code was quite messy and the people that developed it a lot of time ago, uh, I don't know who they are. <laughs> so we decided to, to modify it. And we, we think in different things, we think that it would be awesome to have uh, our 2D editor with this, in, in the same tool that, that we are gonna do everything in 3D later. Okay, for example, 
Um, an airport is a complex structure. Okay, doing an airport by hand, modeling an airport, it's really, really impossible. You have thousands and maybe tens of thousands of things in the ground, you know, and mostly in the ground, uh, lines, signals, uh, paintings, and they are all important. They are all important. And the most important thing maybe is that uh, most of these things uh, follow a set of rules that are really constrained. I mean, you can have a document, I call it, I call it Anexo 14, okay, it's the name of the PDF in Spanish, Anexo, I don't know how to say it in English, but you know, it's like a, a part of, of a document, Anexo 14. And it's like 300 pages that explain how to build an airport. Um, so, for example, all the signaling that you are, the uh, perpendicular lines that you are seeing in the, these lines here, I don't know if the, okay, you can see the mouse. Uh, these lines, the distance between these lines are uh, ruled by, by the curvature of the, of the road, for example. The distances between lights, the position, the lights, uh, direction, the, the lights uh, needs to be pointing to, and everything is set, is ruled, is constrained. So, okay, let's do it procedurally. No? Um, so we decided to make a tool that uh, the user can build an airport, but without having to think about all these things. You know, it just, it's like a vector thing. You can just press buttons in the viewport and something is gonna happen. So what I have done is to record a video, it's an eight minute video that I'm gonna be uh, explaining while the video is, is on. And is the whole process uh, between starting a project and the airport is already elevated and ready to be exported to our engine. Um, it's only focused on the 2D, okay, all the 3D in the airport, 3D is buildings on, or airplanes or cars that are in the airport are using the, the normal pipeline in Blender. We are using the asset system or the link system and that's it. So let's have a look at the, at the tool. Um, oh, oh. Sorry. Okay. Um, before uh, starting the video, uh, everything you see in the viewport is being drawn by the GPU module. Okay, nothing, Blender doesn't know nothing about everything that is that you are looking. Okay. It's, uh, later we, we can talk about that. <laughs> okay. Uh, an empty scene. Well, so the first thing we do is to create a project. It has a quite a lot of input information. Uh, I don't know, uh, geographical information about the airport, uh, style sheets, because we have uh, some style sheet to define all the textures and how to map uh, procedurally all these textures. Some height maps that are gonna be used later to, to elevate the airport. Uh, it takes some time because this image uh, is quite big and, and Blender is loading it. And, and also because of the reprojecting, okay? We are using geographical coordinates, latitude, longitude, and these kind of things. So the image is being reprojected to a planar projection that can be shown in Blender and, and the user can work on. So from this information, I'll, uh, for example, in this case, a runway that is the main road in the, in the airport where the plane uh, starts to fly, uh, has been generated uh, and you can see a couple of signals that have been uh, bad imported. So you can just select this segment and take this uh, floating window and take parameters. Uh, it's all based on parameters because all is done procedurally. So you change these things and you apply and everything is being redrawn by, by our editors. Okay, so you are changing this, the designator mark is, is just these uh, numbers that represent the, the name of, the, of this header in the airport. So um, let's see what I'm doing because I recorded a video like a month ago, so I don't remember. Uh, okay, I'm showing that there are hundreds of parameters that you can touch 
maybe in the future we can do some Gitmos or something because it's quite uh, time consuming to, to modify all these parameters. So let's say we have finished this runway. Okay, I'm, I'm a good user, I'm a saving because Blender maybe doesn't crash by my, my add-on do. <laughs> uh, some division by zero. Uh, so you uh, create the taxiway, it's another operator, just for, why not? So you start creating something. This, uh, the, the thing that you are creating is like a graph, okay? Uh, the developers, well, developers and non-developers know that there are some kind of nodes that are the little uh, red squares. So this node, uh, well, the, the, the segments are split and the node has some internal information. So you are just uh, copying uh, the airport, you know, with the template you have uh, below. Uh, so where is it all this information? So we have hundreds of properties registered in Blender. So everything that you are creating now is not geometry, it's not lines inside Blender. Everything is inside properties that we have created in Blender. A lot of properties, okay? So if you have a look at the code, uh, it's good, <laughs> it's interesting. So, okay, uh, everything happens automatically. And when you finish this thing, you start editing editing things because you, so a lot of things has happening under the hood, okay? You just modify the radius of this node, for example, and every single line is being generated for you. And the user is happy, so I'm happy, I'm happy too. Uh, okay, so you are just modifying things. And you can do a lot of things, for example, select all these segments, uh, a lot of code has been written <laughs> to do these things. Uh, we are using hotkeys because as we are inside an operator, all the time, we, it's difficult to, to show a panel and, and have things to, to press on, okay? Uh, this is an extension, an extended view. You can modify the handles of, of the lines, but the lines are being, uh, are smart, quite smart, okay? So they calculate how, how they, they can, they, how the shape is, is going to, uh, to have. Um, so what else? Lighting system, I think, I don't know. Let's see what happens. I really do not know. Um, well, I have disabled a uh, couple of things because uh, for performance things, for the CPU performance was not really, really good. When I when I uh, when I am over a segment and, and and I change the the color of the of the lines, so I disable it. But well, you can see that there are tons of, of options. So you are, for example, this uh, creating these perpendicular lines. You just change all the parameters, the length, the spacing, the offset, whatever, and the styling. Okay, there are a lot of styles. This style is a, a registered property whose options are loaded by, by files, which is a, a really good thing from Blender. I, I didn't know uh, it could be done. Uh, I'm enabling the lighting system because all the lights are being already calculated. Uh, so these little points, it's like frustums are the lights and you can see there is uh, calculated in real time using the styling system and all the, all the information that, that are stored. In, in the properties register in Blender. And you can do almost whatever you want to, okay? Segment options, lighting options, modify every single thing. Um, I'm going to, oh, let's wait to see what happens. So the user is changing things. It's, and and any time you press an operator and you start a, any of these any of these operations, uh, an airport graph is created, an airport graph that doesn't know too much about Blender. In fact, it's a Python structure that is not related with Blender in, in any way. So what I have done in Blender is to generate editors, editors that can, that can represent this information in the viewport. And, and now how to answer to the user inputs. Okay, so we modify a model, it's a, kind of model view, in fact. 
we modify the model. The model then is serialized into Blender, but it could be serialized into other things, maybe a database or, or a file or whatever. Okay, it's the same. Uh, another thing that could be done in an airport is to put signals in the, in the ground. So there is this little tool that, uh, well, you can use a kind of regular expression because of the D and the signal is being generated right there. It's also painted by the GPU module. You can do, uh, you can paint whatever you want, in fact. And I save again, I'm a good user. Um, when you finish this, this thing, you can generate the geometry, okay? The geometry is really simple, in fact, because kind of only a squares, uh, but there are curves. Um, for the curve system, uh, we use the BMS module that has some IPI function that does, lets you generate all the geometry. So, so here I think there are like uh, 3,000 elements in Blender at this moment uh, because for the lighting system we are using empty so <laughs> uh, and there are a lot of lights in, the, in an airport. Okay. Uh, that thing with the proper uh, naming convention, the proper set of parameters that come from our style sheets. And okay, so it's almost ready. The thing we are gonna do now is to elevate the airport, okay? Because we have a database uh, all around the world. I mean, we have information about all the terrain in the world. We need to elevate the airport. And okay, it's, it's done in, in, at this point. So a lot of things have happened and, and I, I don't see it, okay, but uh, I will explain in a moment. So the airport has been elevated and with the terrain database and some geometry has been generated, okay, because maybe, maybe you have problems with your plane being elevated with some four vertices. So sometimes you have to sample uh, the height map and generate new geometry, okay. It has done in just a second or less. Um, the elevation module is done in C++, so we are using exact the same way as before. We convert everything in the airport to a, a single graph representation that we have bindings, and we just call a C++ function, and this function give, uh, returns uh, another, another uh, a single graph, maybe modified. So everything is good you can export it and you have an airport in, in your engine, okay? Uh, so that's the tool I've been working on for a long time. <laughs> um, oh shit. I don't know how to, how to. It's the same for me with the mobile, eh? I, I cannot manage my, my mobile phone. So <clears throat> about the implementation, um, a couple of things, just uh, it's not exactly a technical uh, talk, so if anyone has any question, of course, I, I would answer, but well. Uh, we use a model view architecture. It's uh, quite important. I have been talking about the airport graph uh, that is not related with Blender, and that's uh, because it's easy to program this way, I guess, or I think. Um, so with this airport graph, we can serialize all the data that builds an airport uh, in, in the way we want. In this case, we are doing inside Blender, so, so we can have only one file that represents the entire airport. Without geometry, okay, we just use this add-on and generate the geometry, elevate it, and, and it works, and that's good. Um, this model view architecture maybe uh, lets us in the future use geometry nodes to represent all the information uh, in real time. Instead of doing the mesh generation at the end, maybe we can generate the, all the geometry while the user is working and it would be super good. Uh, we are using state machines in, inside Blender operators is uh, the way to do not do a spaghetti code and there are a lot of options inside this add-on so state machines are really necessary. Um, C++ Python bindings, I think it's, uh, it has been a really good thing to do um, to save a lot of time, to, to have the possibility to have C++ working for us without touching the core of Blender. And about the buildings, Blender asset system, tooling 3D models into the viewport, 
we are going to use uh, the Blender tools. So that's, that's good. Uh, future developments, I'm thinking uh, about uh, finishing the current development. It would be good. I think by the end of the year, uh, yeah, it should be maybe tested or, you know, in a quite uh, good moment. Uh, scripted airports and machine learning models. A scripted airports, I mean that um, sometimes we, we want to generate generic airports and generic, quite generic airports. And using this model view architecture, it's really easy to script an, a, an airport because you, you know, you have an airport graph, there is a class and you say something like, okay, add me a runway from this point to this point, add me a whatever with this style, with this style, and everything is gonna build for you. Uh, <clears throat> machine learnings for the airport, okay, there are some, some points, it would be really, really good. For example, the signal in the ground that has some text it would be really awesome to, to not doing this by hand. <laughs> uh, it's quite time consuming, so it would be good. And I would add uh, another point in that list that the e use geometry nodes because I do not know too much about everything. I started follow the, the development at the start of the project, but I do not know exactly what we can do with this with this thing, so if I would be able to to link or to relation all the information that I have in, in the register properties without modifying my internal model, <laughs> if possible, uh, to work with geometry nodes, uh, I don't know if it's possible, uh, well, the airport would be generated in real time. That's it. So, I think this is everything I... I want to say, so I don't know what time is it. I think we have a lot of time. Oh, yeah. Um, any question or something? Um, <laughs> well, that's it. I think it's, um, well, it's a prototype that work well, works well in Blender. Uh, well, I take some ideas from, from a red topology add-on that exists. Maybe the, so, uh, Jonathan Williamson may, may be working on something like that. So I start uh, looking at videos in, the, in YouTube and I saw that they draw a couple of things in the viewport in screen space and 3D space. So I start thinking about it and, and I end up with this uh, solution that, well, it could be interesting for us. Someone. So, yep. Uh, so, if anyone has any questions later, you can ask them. Yeah, sure. Um, I was just wondering if um, the code is available online or that you can download this tool and use it uh, and try it out? Well, um, Interesting question. <laughs> um, well, the code uh, belongs to my company because I'm working for a private company. So uh, I can ask my manager. I, I sincerely, I worry about, uh, I mean, I think it's not gonna be available, okay? Because of my company and the way they think. Uh, I'm so sorry. But um, if you have any specific question or something, uh, I can give you my mail. I can write down my mail right now in the, you know, here. And if someone wants to know something, I, I will answer you. If okay. So for example, my mail is my personal mail. And please don't spam me too much. Okay. <laughs> but uh, I would answer any question. And I, I will explain you anything of this tool. It's, you know. Anyway, I'm gonna ask, okay, but. Well, interesting. <laughs> uh, well, so that's it. If, if there's no any question or whatever. We have 10 minutes, so if something crosses your mind, just 
asking. <laughs>